In this Python coding exercise, we are going to build out a manual exponent function. And so what I mean by manual exponent is, uh, let's write some test cases. It gives the ability to pass in two arguments. So if I say manual exponent, and then we pass in two and then three, then the return value of this should be eight. And then if I did the same thing with some other values, so if I said what is 10 squared, then this one should be 100 and so on and so forth. So there are a few ways that you can do this, and I'll give you a couple different recommendations before you pause the video and try to build this out yourself. That, so I'm gonna actually show you two different solutions, and one is a manual way of doing it. It's what's called a iterative approach, where we are going to simply iterate over the elements and then build up the solution. And then I'm also gonna show you a functional approach. And a functional approach is going to leverage, and this is where one of the hints will be, it is going to leverage the reduce function. So you will import from func tools, import reduce. And if you are interested in using the second solution and building out a functional approach, then you can go and read the guides, look at the examples for the reduce function, and then build it out from there. So once again, what we're looking to do is build out a function called manual exponent that takes in two arguments and then it uses whatever the first argument is as the base and the next argument is the exponent and it returns whatever the value of that is. So right now you can pause the video and when we come back then you can watch me go through both of the solutions. So I hope you had a good time going through that and building out those solutions. The very first way I'm going to build this out is with a iterative approach. So I'm going to create a function here called manual exponent, and it's gonna take a number and a exponent as arguments. And so the very first thing I'll do is I'm gonna create a couple variables. I'm going to create a counter variable which is going to have the exponent minus one, and I'll explain why I'm doing that here shortly. And then I'm also going to keep track of the total, and the total is going to, by default, be set to whatever the value of num is. So if we pass in two, this total is set to two to start off with. If it's 10, it's 10. And then from there, I'm going to create a while loop. So I'm gonna say while the counter is greater than zero, then I want you to take the total and then using our assignment, I'm going to say asterisk equals, so this is gonna give us a product. So total is going to be equal to num, and now this is the same exact thing as saying total equals total times num, this is just a shorthand syntax for being able to perform that kind of assignment. And then from there, we also need to take the counter and decrement it. So I'm going to decrease it by one. Once again, if that syntax looks a little weird, that's exactly the same thing as saying counter is equal to counter minus one, but I like this syntax, it's a little bit shorter, and if you are used to using incrementers and decrementers, then it makes sense. And then when I come down here, I'm just going to return the total. So what exactly is going on here? Well, I'm creating a counter variable, and by default, it's going to be set to whatever the exponent value is, minus one, and the reason for that is because I'm setting total equal to whatever the value of num is. So this, t if you look at what an exponent really is, so let's just walk through that here. So remember, an exponent is just something like this. If we say two to the power of three, that's really just the same thing as saying two times two 
times two. And so if we're trying to keep track of this, that first two here is going to be covered when we assign total equal to num. So if we didn't subtract this, then we would be multiplying one too many times. So that's a reason why we subtracted one from it. Then here in the counter, we check to see if the counter is greater than zero, and then it's just gonna continue this loop until the counter gets down to zero. And each time, it's gonna take the total, and then it's going to multiply that total and keep on exponentially building up whatever the value is. And then each time, it decrements the counter. So the first time, the counter is going to, for this specific example, the counter is gonna start at two, then it's going to iterate, it's gonna multiply two times two, which will be four, then it will decrement that counter down to one, and which means it only has one more time of going through it, and then it's gonna multiply by two one more time, and that is how you get eight. So let's run this just to make sure that this version is working and I don't have any typos. So we'll come and grab our examples from up here. Get rid of that. And now let's add some print statements so we can actually see this in action. So we're going to add that. Okay, so Let's come and run this. This is the manual exponent. If I run that, you can see we get eight and a hundred. So this is working very nicely. And this is if you, this is the solution that you built out, that is completely fine. This is what it would be called a iterative approach to the solution. Now, what I want to now show you is a functional solution. So let's come here. And I'm going to, uh, oh, you know what? I'm going to get rid of it here in the show notes, though. You will have access to it. So if you want to go see this, you can go access it in the show notes and grab it. But for right now, I don't want you to you know, kind of be confused by seeing both of them right next to each other. So here with the functional approach, it's gonna be much faster to write, but with that being said, it may be considered a little bit harder to read, especially if you're not used to using tools such as reduce, but it is important to have an understanding for what's going on here. Even if you prefer to use the iterative approach, the reason why I wanted to include this functional approach is because as you develop as a Python, uh, programmer, what you're going to find is you're going to run into a lot of documentation and a lot of other developers code that will use this functional kind of approach to building out these kinds of systems and this type of functionality. And if you're not used to building this out yourself, then what's going to happen is you're going to get you're going to go see that code and you're not really going to have any idea what's going on. So that is why this is a good idea. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a computed list. So I'm going to say computed list, and you could call this whatever you want, but I like using it because compute, what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be building a list and we're gonna be doing it dynamically, and I think computed list is a nice way of describing that. And the syntax that we're gonna use is I'm going to say num, and then say num times whatever the exponent is. Now, if that code looks weird to you, let's switch over into the REPL really quick and see exactly what's going on here. So let's say that we have some type of number. So uh, we'll put in here three and then, oh, and actually I need to store this in a variable. So we'll use the same name, computed list equals three and then times two. What this is going to do, if you look at what computed list gives you now, is that will give you a list with 
three, with two items, both of which are three. So if you ever need to build out a list and you know all of the elements that you want inside of it, this is a really nice way to be able to build that out. So that is all we're doing there is we're just saying that I want to build a list. I want every one of the list items to be this num value and I want the number of elements to be equal to the exponent. And then from there, we can simply return the value of the reduce function. So now we can build out the reduce function and I can already tell you I'm gonna run out of room here. So I'm gonna close this out and now we can build this. So I'm gonna say reduce. Reduce, if you looked up the documentation, then you know that it takes a lambda function expression. So I'm going to say lambda total and then element. So these are the arguments that we're passing to that lambda function. And then inside of here, we're going to pass in a code block where we say total times element and then from there we will say computed list and that is it so what we're doing here and uh, you're gonna see if, if this if you've never used reduce before or any type of functional programming this may look really weird to you and so let's kind of just walk through exactly what's going on reduce takes a function as an argument and then it takes a list so what and then whatever you put inside of that function is whatever process it's going to run so with this lambda function here we are passing it arguments of total and element and then we're saying that every time that you call this lambda function which it's going to be called on every element in our computed list right here we want you to take the total which this keeps track of whatever the total is and that's something specific to the reduce function so i want you to take the total and multiply it by the element and so that is all that you need to do to get that working now let's before we do anything let's actually test this out to make sure i don't have any typos or anything like that and then we'll walk through some more examples of yeah, what it's what it's really doing so let me start up pip and shell to make sure we're working with the right version of Python. And now Python, let's run this. This is the manual exponent. And you can see that's working perfectly. So we're getting the exact same behavior that we got before, but now we're using a functional approach for what we're building out with the solution. So this is something that I highly recommend that if you did not understand this or understand the solution, that you take this code and you play with it yourself. So you go through the documentation, you look at all the examples, and then you see exactly what each one of these elements represent. Because if you come down here, we can walk through exactly what's happening at each stage. So the way a lambda function works, it's really just like a regular function. So it's like I'm doing something like this. And uh, by the way, if you also watch some of my other videos where I've talked about the reduce function, I've gone through some of these explanations before. So I apologize for the duplication, but hopefully this will help reinforce it. So remember, lambda is just a function. It's a function without a name. It's also called an anonymous function. And so it's very similar to if I did something like this, where I said some function, and then I passed in arguments like total and then element. And then inside, I said, I want you to return the total times the element and then what reduce does is reduce iterates over whatever list that we pass into it so reduce is then going to take our computed list and then every single time that it iterates so if we have a list of one two and three what it's going to do is reduce is going to call sum 
if I can type it, there you go. So reduce is gonna call some function. It's gonna start with a total. And so it's going to start with the total of zero by default. And then it's gonna take the first element, which in this case is one. And it does do a little bit of magic, uh, just so you're aware, because uh, it may be a little bit confusing to you that you know if you technically started with zero and multiplied it, then your sum or the, your product for all the exponents would always be zero. They do some error checking to make sure that that doesn't happen. So it's a little bit more akin to it understands that it needs to skip that first step. So it's going to say, okay, one times one is one. Then it's going to come down and the next step, it's going to say, okay, we have the total of one, but the next element here is two. So it's going to say two times one is two. And then it's just going to keep on going down the line like that. And so in this case, what we wanted it to do was to work like an exponent. So it's going to take the total and then it's just going to keep on going down the line. If you want to take a look at the exact example that we had, this would be the same as saying, oops, not two, three, four, two, two, two. So the very first time that it goes through, it's gonna set this value at two, and then it's gonna look and say, okay, the first element's two, so that's four, and then it's gonna go through it again. The total this next time is gonna be four, and then it's gonna multiply it by two, and then you're gonna end up returning eight, which is exactly what we got. So that is the way reduce works. It iterates over a list, whatever collection you pass in. In our case, we passed in that computed list, which would look exactly like this. And then it iterates over, and then it runs whatever process that you tell it to run. So in this case, it runs this lambda function where it takes the total and the element, and then it just multiplies them together, and then it keeps track of the total. So it keeps on adding on to that. It maintains the state of the total. So I highly recommend that you become as familiar as possible with functions like reduce. It's one of the core functions, and it's part of the reason why I keep bringing it up in some of these coding exercises, because it's a very popular one to be used in uh, coding interview questions. And it also is a very powerful tool that allows you to quickly build out this kind of functional feature in your own programs.